Ruchem Aboyim. Again, welcome everyone. Welcome to our home. The um, lecture tonight is uh, on a topic kind of interesting to me anyways, an open book. So we know that God Almighty is able to know not only our actions, but even our thoughts. That being the case, in reality, in our relationship with God Almighty, we are an open book. Imagine just how does that book read? That becomes an interesting question. If we were to start leafing through the pages, stopping here and there, what would it, what would it reveal? Now, I would think that there would be some parts that will make us laugh. Others that will probably make us cry. Some parts will want, we will want to skip because they're just too boring. Of course, there'll be other parts that were exciting. Some maybe just a little too exciting. Some parts of the story will change from chapter to chapter, especially our age and the challenges and rewards that it can bring. You know, there's a saying that no wise man ever wanted to be younger. We will enjoy the chapter dedicated to our successes. I would hope that it is long, very long. But then there'll be another chapter that I'm certain will be even longer, longer than we would have wished. The many failures in our lives, things that we should have done or could have done better. When we look at the chapter on our on our and on what our dreams and ambitions were when we were young and idealistic, we will most likely find that somehow many things turned out just a little different than we imagined. Our family, our profession, our religious observance, our friends, who we are today. You know that question, who we are today, may be a very difficult question for us to answer. After all, the person who you think you are is many times not the same person that other people think that you are. I guess the answer is probably that every opinion has some thread of truth. I think that the opinions that other people entertain about us is many times the garments that we wear. We should choose our wardrobe carefully. I think that defining exactly who you are can stifle any growth. I would hope that each day we get just a little better, a little smarter, a little wiser, closer to the me that we all should be. I believe that life is a journey. The difficulty is that the journey takes us up a mountain. At least in the beginning, as we begin our journey, we can walk with confidence. It may seem actually pretty easy, but then the terrain becomes steeper and we are faced with obstacles that we are forced to navigate. We know that we are expected to climb, so then the real challenges begin. Once we start our ascent, we come to realize that we can't just climb up the mountain. We first needed to prepare for our climb. We would need to acquire the proper equipment. We would need to work on putting our physical bodies into shape so that we would be able to execute the climb, especially when we encounter the steep terrain and the thin oxygen at the higher elevations. We would need to carry a backpack with safety ropes and other equipment to reach our goal. But most of all, most of all, we would need an instructor, a guide to lead us on the way so that we could climb even higher than we would have been able to do by ourselves. In addition, we would need to read the map and study the manual, all in order to make our climb a success. You know, I remember when I first started to downhill snow ski. I took lessons so as to be able to become a better skier. The ski instructor would take me on terrain that I never would have, that I had never had skied by myself. What I found interesting was that when I was with the instructor, somehow I was suddenly able to traverse areas that I thought was well above my skill level. The truth was that I was able to ski much better than I thought. Having an instructor helped to make me realize that fact. He gave me the confidence that I needed. If you don't believe in yourself, well, guess what? No one else will ever believe in you and you'll never succeed. Since I mentioned skiing, I thought that it might be interesting to mention two more important lessons that I learned from downhill skiing. First, let me mention that I am petrified of heights. <laughs> right. So how did I become an avid black diamond skier? The answer is, that I trained myself to only look 
three feet in front of me. When you only look at three feet in front of you, everything looks flat. 8,000 or 12,000 feet up on a mountain, guess what? Scare the heck out of me. But three feet, three feet, I can handle three feet. In addition, I learned never to stop at the top of a run to survey the terrain. I make it a point to always ski over the top. If I need to stop, I do so at a lower point, which makes the run easier to handle. These three lessons that I learned from skiing also apply to our religious observance. First and foremost, always take a lesson. It is much easier to learn something properly the first time than trying to unlearn bad habits that you have developed on your own. One should always try to employ the best instructor, instructor that they can find. So too in our religious endeavors. We need to find a teacher, a mentor, one who not only gives us information, but also someone who is capable of giving us inspiration. You know, from time to time, I've heard some of my students say certain prayers such as the Kiddush on Friday night or the Kaddish recited for a loved one. They many times mispronounce the Hebrew words. However, if I ask them to recite a prayer that they are not familiar with, they pronounce each of the words perfectly. Once you have memorized a mistake, it takes much more effort to correct the error. This concept of three feet in front of you is also very important in our religious observance. We can never get too far ahead of ourselves. As the saying goes, patience is a virtue. Patience is also a necessity for us to succeed in our quest for a closer relationship with our Father in Heaven. We need to address each day, each challenge by itself. We need to connect with God Almighty, one mitzvah at a time. You know, we witness in the Torah with the story of Adam, first man, and his eating from the tree of knowledge, and also from the story of the making of the golden calf, which was done only 40 days after the Jewish nation received the Torah, directly from God Almighty on Mount Sinai. Both incidents were the result of a lack of patience. When we accept Torah and mitzvahs, we are never in a place or time where we don't have what to do. We can't stop at the top of a plateau and look down the mountain of life and freeze. We have to come over the top. We need to constantly try to move forward, to improve, each day just a little better. We need to believe that we have the ability and the determination to succeed in our mission in life. We need to believe not only in God, we also need to actually believe in ourselves. We need to believe what the Torah tells us that that in whatever direction a person wants to travel, well, guess what? Heaven will assist him. It is best for us to climb with others. This way we encounter, any if, if we encounter any difficulty, we have other hands to assist us. Besides, anything that you do with other people, especially if you enjoy their company, is always much more fun and productive. You can, of course, always climb alone. But for, the most, for most of us, that may be a recipe for failure. Even if you can, conceive, even if you can succeed by yourself, hmm, you know, celebrating that success by yourself can feel very empty. We have to wonder just how many pages our book will contain. Will it be interesting reading or not? It may be difficult for us to read about the things that we should have done but never had the motivation to attempt, or the things that we did attempt, but we kind of gave up much too soon. We didn't stay the course. We gave up. Reliving our failures won't be easy. Reawakening those negative feelings and depression. However, imagine if we continue to read and we realize that many of those so-called failures became the motivation and the information that allowed us to reach even greater successes than previously possible. How many of us really have the ability to climb to the top of the mountain of life? If we don't reach the top, does that mean that we have failed in our mission in this world? I think that as we read on, or we would come to the realization that success is not necessarily predicated on reaching the top. It is all relative to what your God-given abilities allow you to attain. As it states in Pirkei Avot, the Ethics of the Fathers, 
the Tarfin used to say that it is not incumbent upon you to complete the task. On the other hand, you are not free to desist from it either. Now, a few years back, there was a gathering of some 80,000 Jews in MetLife football stadium in New Jersey. They were gathered for a celebration of what they call Siam Hashas, the conclusion of the study of all of the six orders of the Talmud. They consist of some 2,700 2, pages plus. Truly an admirable accomplishment. At the same time, there was a, an individual in a small apartment in the Bronx who was celebrating the fact that he, he had just completed studying one page of the Talmud. Though it may not seem equal, but the fact that he had managed to finish that one page may well have outshined many of those who had finished all the pages. As the states in Pirkei Avot, the Ethics of the Fathers, Ben Hehe stated, Lefumsara Agra, according to the difficulty, is the reward. I've often wondered if purgatory may well consist of our being shown another book, not the book that we wrote with all the actions of our lives. No, I think that this book will contain all the successes, all the accomplishments that we were expected to achieve during our lifetimes. Reading page after page about what we could have been may well be the greatest form of punishment that we could ever experience. Well, the good news is, if you are watching or listening to this, my thought, the ending of your book has not yet been written. We still have some time to make the ending of our book mirror in some way the book that God our Father had hoped would be the story of our lives. And with that, let us hope to help usher in the coming of Sheikh Sakana quickly and in our time. Again, let me thank you for attending, for taking the time to listen. May God bless you with all that is good, happiness, health, success, safety. And uh, again, Shabbat Shalom. Again, keep the lights burning. Hanukkah never has to end. God bless you and be well.